It's not often in life when um, you see circumstances align in a way that gives you an opportunity to have a run at a challenge that either you think is maybe beyond you or maybe you even imagine is not necessarily possible. Those circumstances really came together for me uh, when I look back uh, around 18 months, 15 months ago, and it's the journey since then that I'd like to share with you uh, here. So the starting point was this rather audacious, unusual idea that we hatched around, could you challenge flight or could you challenge the way that humans have flown um, and come at it from a different angle? So rather than put the human being inside a helicopter or an aircraft, what about if you augmented the human mind and body in a way that gave you just the missing ingredients in order to achieve flight in an entirely different way. Reasons for doing this? No reasons other than having a massive amount of fun. Um, I'm gonna run first of all just something, rather than me doing any of this, um, there's something that just really gets across, I think, uh, when I say about the human mind and body, gets across uh, a really nice example of uh, what I'm talking about here. I mean, you, you don't really need, uh, need me to show this to you, but, uh, um, what you'll see is a uh, training partner of mine in, uh, in London, uh, Denton, doing the kind of stuff that if you needed any examples of how amazing the human mind and body can be if you train them, then this is a good example. So it's pretty impressive stuff and uh, core to this journey has been, I suppose, my passion for, for believing in what's possible if you focus that, that mind and body on a target, on, a, on, a, on an objective. Now what's missing though is uh, that ingredient, that technology piece. So, we went out and uh, got ourselves. This was the very first sort of ground zero test of um, the technology that we thought might well be uh, the myth, that, that magic missing ingredient. This is a little micro gas turbine and this was me with a mop bucket in a lane having a go at seeing whether we could dismiss most of the concerns that were out there around how you'd be able to manage this. And that worked really well, so there was another obvious step that we went to, which is we got ourselves a field and bought another one, and then had a little go at experimenting and trying to learn the balance of control. The real hero here is, uh, if you look closely in the background of the uh, footage, you can see there's somebody trying to do some allotment kind of gardening that uh, after a while just gives up. Um, and you see in a minute, I try and, um, when I finish grinning at the camera, um, you see me uh, trying to hold them out horizontal. And you get some idea of the there, about 45 kilos of push I'm, I'm trying to withstand there unsuccessfully. So um, again, you know, only one sensible place to go after that, go and get yourself four. Um, and bounce around, in this case, in an old farmyard. Um, and this is pretty compelling. You can see, you know, the, the, the thrust and stability control was starting to get really good. We went down some pretty unusual uh, directions as well. So this was an experiment trying to, um, trying, to, uh, trying to see if, apart from having them on the legs, um, the idea of suspending, you know, myself would be a nice way of going. Actually, it didn't work at all. The extra stability I got from the back was just really hard to manage. It would obviously slacken off as I lifted, and then it would come back in hard as I lowered again, so that didn't really work. Um, falling over, you know, learning by failing, a key theme of this whole journey, uh, really important in, in, you know, in a really important way of learning about what works and what doesn't. That was an example where we pinched a fuel line. It, was, it got caught slightly in my elbow joint, and I just pinched it, and that was the result. Getting out there, learning by failing, literally falling over has been critical to this. We went down to some really interesting dead ends as well in a sort of weird evolutionary thing. This is the three-headed nightmare kind of thing. This is three engines on each arm. So that's now pushing about 70 kilos of thrust, 65 kilos of thrust on each arm. That was kind of silly. It was fun to mess around doing it. But, um, and we started to get more and more uh, progress. Um, to our surprise, this started to really come together. This is now two engines on each arm and an engine on each leg. And you can see from these little clips, um, it was really starting to, to kind of surprisingly come together. Um, and what we ended up doing was, uh, and it caught us slightly by surprise, it was just all these lots of little incremental steps uh, that finally culminated into this next little clip, which I'm really proud of. It still sends a little shiver down my spine because this was the moment when this endeavor went from, you know, surely not, this is just goofing around. As with a lot of kind of extreme innovative ideas, you never really know if you're gonna get there. It might, you might just put the whole thing in the bin at the end of it, but this is the moment when the bin went away. Yeah, I'm... I'm uh, I still love that moment. That, that, as you can see from my face, that was, uh, that was like, oh my God, I've just... Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. That, 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 was, that, was, that was... I still like that. Um, then from there, really, uh, falling over was still a critical part of the journey. That, that I did that in front of uh, our Red Bull friends. That was great. Um, that was a problem with the fuel tank, that very flat looking of my three fuel tanks on my back. That was empty. Uh, it had drawn... It had emptied twice as quick as the other two. Another good learning. 
But really, it was a question of refining from there. And it's really fun as I just play these, these uh, other little clips from a couple of months back uh, to reflect on that starting hypothesis that the human mind and body, when given the right chance, can learn to do some pretty cool stuff. I can't even skateboard. This is not about me being some, having some special capability or anything. Um, that balance and stability that you're seeing up there, that is all down to the brain's uh, capacity to, to retune balance. So, you know, doing that, if you build a robot to do that, that's pretty impressive. I, I've, I've learned to do that probably for, with only an hour and a half in the saddle doing that. And it's all down to, apart from the engineering being, you know, kind of well done, um, it's all down to the fact that the brain can, can, can learn to adapt and, and control this equipment in a really quite elegant way. So, um, and I'll, I'll flick to a, a, it's about a 30 second clip of um, something from only two weeks ago, because in terms of where we're going, this is just scraping the surface. We only launched this about to the public only about two months ago, and uh, it's just kind of got people very excited, it seems, and we're now spending the whole time traveling around the world, bringing this to events and displays. Um, I'll, I'll kick off this, uh, this little clip. This is quite cool. This is starting to push the speed boundary now. Um, yeah, I, I, this, is, this is great fun. I actually involuntarily whooped on the return journey here, but no one could hear me because it's god-awful noisy. Um, but uh, apart from doing events and displays, which is great fun, um, we're also working on the sort of phase two system. This is really a cobbled together prototype, frankly. It's taught us so much, though, and all of that knowledge is going into the second version, which is going to make this look like, just like child's play. So that's kind of really fun. And we're even tentatively starting to think about, probably in the next few months, starting to look for kind of pilots two and three. So if there's any people out there that fancy having a go, maybe. Um, but really, if I, if I take a step back and, um, uh, and consider this journey, you know, I, I've spent uh, 15 years in a, in a relatively normal job, you know, in a corporate career. Um, and I think what I'd like to think we've demonstrated here is the sheer power of having an idea and then caring less about whether it's impossible or ridiculous or whatever and just getting out there in a safe and sensible way, reasonably sensible, getting out there and just trying it and learning from doing. There's about half a dozen reasons why this should not work. And we could have done a desk study 18 months ago and written it off. But it just shows the power if you get out there and learn from doing and literally learn from failing and falling over. And, and that's, apart from pushing the boundaries of human flight, I think it's the inspiration I'd like to think we're, we're bringing on this journey that also is you know, certainly really close to my heart. So thank you very much.